What's up YouTube? Today I want to talk about creating generative music in Faceplant. So first I want to talk about the Krell patch, which is like a, which I guess is quite a common practice in modular synth when learning about generative music and stuff. And then we're going to expand the idea a little bit further to make it sound a little bit more musical. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what the Krell patch is. I have done various tutorials about how to create those in VCV rack. We have talked about like what it is and stuff. I'm just going to talk about how to create it in Faceplant and some of the fundamentals that you need to know. So let's dive in and have a look. So here I have a brand new instance of Faceplant that I've opened up. And what I want to do is just to start things off, I want to add in a sine wave. So the idea of generative music is to base a lot of your sound design or melodic content on randomization. And something that's interesting about the Krell patch is it basically breaks the boundaries of grid music by randomizing both the time of the music as well as the pitch of the music. So traditional Krell patches don't actually have any quantization where that's basically snapping uh, the pitch into specific scales. However, what I want to do is bake it into the patch and you can kind of choose whether you want the quantization on or off or choose specific scales and stuff. So I think it's helpful to kind of just create your patch with it in and you can always choose afterwards. So the first thing I want to do is create kind of like a function generator inside the modulators in Faceplant. And I think the easiest way to do this is using an LFO table, because this gives us the opportunity to kind of like morph the shape, you see, using these different parameters here, we can kind of morph the shape of the of the sound like this, as well as morph the speed. A function generator is kind of like an LFO and an envelope, as well as like a remap. It's kind of all these things in one in the modular world. We're gonna kind of use, uh, take advantage of the ability to kind of like sweep this LFO table uh, to be able to get a huge variety of different tones with the sound. So what I also wanna do is I wanna create what's commonly known in the modular world as an end of cycle trigger. And how would we do that, you might ask. The easiest way to do this would be with a remap and then set it so that it's just a trigger at the beginning of the cycle that then modulates downwards at the end of the cycle. So basically this allows us to create a trigger right at the beginning or end of a cycle. And, we cre and then what we do is we control the entire cycle of LFO table and remap with a single LFO. So what I wanna do here is create an LFO and I'm gonna set this to a ramp up. So this is gonna be like our master speed controller and then we're gonna set this to control the phase of the LFO table. So you can see how, what that does is that basically cycles through the LFO table and actually set it so that, you see, and we can set it so that like this LFO controls the speed of this LFO table. And then what we wanna do is we wanna set this to control the remap. Now you'll see every time it reaches the beginning of the cycle, it triggers that remap again. So now we've created like an envelope that also triggers uh, an end of cycle trigger when it reaches the end or the beginning of its cycle. So why is this important? In the Krell patch, what I'm gonna do actually is quickly just group everything together here. Let's say new group, and I'm gonna just drag everything inside here real quick. I'm just gonna call this function. So in a traditional Krell patch, the randomization is not set to a specific tempo. It's triggered every time the cycle is finished. So what we can do here is we can set this end of cycle remap that we made. Let's minimize these two over here because we don't need them for now. Set this to trigger the random. So you'll notice now every time the cycle is finished or every time it starts again, every time it loops essentially, we've now triggered the random. So now the trick is to set this random to modulate the speed of the LFO. So now what happens is it basically controls its own speed 
And then sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast. And I guess the trick is to kind of dial in this parameter here, how much random you want on the thing. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to build our quantizer. So let's go and create a new remap. Let's choose a scale. For now, I'm just gonna go scales 48. Let's choose, let's choose a minor pentatonic. So now what we wanna do is we wanna set this random to modulate this remap, right? And then we set this to modulate the semitones 24. So what that's gonna do, because it's bipolar, it's gonna go 24 up and 24 down, which is the full 48 remap. Um, so that's going to be quantized now to the pitch. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna hold a long note and see how this uh, works for us. We can still dial in the amount of random that gets sent through to this and maybe dial this up as well a little bit just to get it a little bit more fine tuned once we've kind of got a, a nice random system in place. So you're probably wondering what was this function, uh, this LFO table in the function generator for? This is to create an envelope or an, an actual like, uh, some sort of dynamics on the sound. So I wanna get this to modulate the level over here. And now we should have the ability to create these varying sounds. So what I wanna do is I wanna create another random and I'm gonna set this to modulate the frame. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us different envelope shapes every time. And if you duplicate the random, it keeps the trigger settings in place. Okay, so just to add some excitement, let's create some effects. So here I've actually created a snap heap effect that I call lead source. This is actually in a lot of the Faceplant 2.0 factory presets. You can jump in there and save it as a snap heap preset if you want. So this has a little thing I call shimmer. Um, it's basically like a little shimmer reverb that you can add to almost any type of sound to create just extra depth. This is just one note being held for a very long time. No MIDI is being sent to the thing. So I wanna create another random that's going to randomize uh, some of the octaves a little bit wider. So let's just create a new random here. Let's create a new remap. Let's set the random to modulate the remap. And then let's set this to modulate this again by another 24. 
no, let's say 12, so it's 12 up and 12 down, because then what we can do is we can just create, so it's one octave down, octave in the middle, one octave up. So we can create some more variation there on the sound within octaves now. So like I said, the traditional Krell patch is not actually quantized. So you hear those like random pitches and stuff, those would potentially not be in a scale. So what we could do is we could actually just go set it back to linear, uh, linear over here. And then it's going to just be kind of microtonal and just randomize all sorts of pitches. So leaving this remap kind of outside of these groups allows us to quickly change the scale to fit it to into whatever context we want. But I like just creating these just sitting back and listening to the listening to the machine kind of create music for us i think that's particularly interesting So that's for the more traditional Krell patch, you know, the actual alien sounds. What I wanna do here is I wanna create a system that we can use to switch between quantized and unquantized. So how we can do that is we can use a macro that's going to sidechain these. But what we need to do is we actually first need to set up a remap that's set to inverted, inverted. So now what we do is we go input here from the macro. Let's use this one. Input from the macro. What's happening here? Actually, this is this we can use as our speed, overall speed, and this can be quantize. Quantize. And then let's set this macro to control this inverted remap, and then we set this, modulate this. You see here, it's modulating this sidechain input of the linear remap, right? And then we set the same quantize remap to modulate the input coming from this to here, which we set to the same amount, it was 24. So now we have another one and we set this to the sidechain input of that, just like that. So now this should switch between these two. Let's just see how this works. <laughs>
Okay, I want to take it a step further. Let's make it into less of just a droning random patch and into more of something that is actually musical, like something that's more of an, like an ambient track. Let's layer it up a little bit. So let's, for example, shift this over here and we can use these for different layers. So I'm going to send this to layer three. So now we have this uh, sign thing on lane three. We can maybe make a low frequency, like a kind of bass tone so let's say new group. What I want to do is just duplicate this over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to retain all of the settings, modulation inputs. So this is important because all the tuning is now going to be the same as this top oscillator over here. We could just apply different processing and stuff like that, for example, to create more of a bassy sound. Um, what I also want to do is let's, for example, create a different function generator. We can create a different LFO table that we use to modulate the shape of the base. So actually first, let's just uh, disable this one and we're gonna jump in here and just start fine tuning it to more of a bass sound.
Okay, now what I want to do is I want to create, use that end of cycle thing that we created here. And we, what we can do with that is we can use that to trigger some rhythmic stuff. And so here, what we can do is we can say, let's create a curve. And let's set the input of this curve to that, right? To see it like triggers now every time. And let's set this to modulate this noise over here. Okay, let's just mute these. Let's listen to this. So if we wanted to give it more of a rhythmic basis, what we could do is we could just jump in here to this LFO. You see where it's randomizing the time of this. What we can do is we can set up a macro that's going to turn both of these off. So let's just call this time random. By default, we do want it up for the curl patch. So we could turn it off, for example, and then sync this. And now it's going to generate on a rhythm.
Awesome. That is about all that we have time for for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you like the video, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet and hitting that like button. See you guys next time. Cheers.